we have time, we'll, we'll uh, take some. But if you can, if you can tonight read, please follow along. Don't take my word for it. The topic that we're going to be preaching on, that I'm going to be preaching on, that we're going to be teaching on, it's a topic that for all do history for us. It's come down to man's opinion. This is where we are today. Man's opinion has completely misconstrued and distorted this message. And tonight, it's important that we get the biblical opinion. So I'm going to be giving lots of scriptures and I'll ask you to please follow along. Tonight we're going to be studying the five compartments of hell. Encouraging, huh? The five compartments of hell. You have your Bible, turn to me to Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17. Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17. I just want to start off with this quick scripture. It says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all of the nations that forget God. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all of the nations that forget God. Do you know this subject that we're going to be looking at tonight? It's a teaching that's been neglected in the church. Not so much in our church, and I thank God for that. But I'm talking about mainstream Christianity as a whole. The teaching and the understanding, the biblical concept of hell, has completely been neglected in the modern church. To say the least, and what's at least called Christianity, many, many churches don't teach this subject at all. And because of this lack of of teaching the word of God in this biblical topic, it's led to many congregations being completely confused about the afterlife. Now, we, I thank God if you're born again here tonight and you're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you're a child of God, you should, be, you should be convinced of where you're going, you're going to heaven. But nevertheless, we have to be able to give an answer for what we believe. It's, all, it's good to know what you believe and it's good to believe what you know. So tonight we're going to try and come around the Word of God, we're going to come around the Scripture, and we're going to get a biblical understanding and outline of the five different compartments of heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This is a fundamental teaching. The book of Hebrews says that eternity is a fundamental teaching, and hell falls on the side of eternity. It's an eternal place. Um, as we're going to see much later on. So this is a fundamental teaching. This is a fundamental teaching in Christianity. You cannot take this away from the Bible. You cannot take this away from Christianity. Every doctrine within of Christianity, it's, it's not just one doctrine by itself. No doctrine can stand alone. Every doctrine is linked together and is overlapped by the one that follows. Do you understand what I mean by that? Like for instance, if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, I'll give you a quick example. Um, we look at the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Well, the next one in our fundamentals is the sinless life. Um, and unless you know anything about the virgin birth, that Jesus didn't inherit his sinful nature from his earthly father because he didn't have one, then you wouldn't understand his sinful life. So it always follows on. And that's how, that's how doctrine is in the Bible. It's continuity goes from the beginning to the end. But sadly, many people take out a certain doctrine that they don't like and they push it to one side and say, no, I'm not going to believe in that. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, as hard as it may be to swallow, you have to believe in everything that the Word of God says. Amen. Jesus said to Satan, he said, man cannot live on bread alone, but every word comes out of the mouth of God. Can you get an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but because of this, um, this understanding that people have of hell, it's led this message to being watered down through the years. It's, it's been ridiculed through the years. To the point where we are today where it's even rejected. Many people who profess to be Christian, many people who profess to be born again, have the relationship with Jesus Christ, can honestly stand up and tell you that I don't believe in a literal hell. It doesn't exist. One man brought to my attention, this is when I first put this message together. I preached the gospel for the first time. He said, you couldn't, surely you must know that hell is not a real place. It's only a state of mind. And that troubled me. As a young Christian, that troubled me. And so I put this message together and I preached it in a few places. And tonight I'm going to teach it there. But it's not the only one who thinks that way. Sadly, I'm going to name and shame a few people. Not known in this church, thank God. But, um, but Billy Graham, well-known evangelist, done a mighty work of the Lord through the years. He said this in an interview with Time magazine. He said, hell is not a literal place of burning fire. 
But instead, it's a separation from God and a burning desire to be in His presence. It's a state of mind, that's what he's saying. It's in your mind. If you, if you don't know God, um, there should be a burning desire to get to know God. That's not what the Bible teaches. Pope John Paul II, in an interview with Reuters magazine in July 2009, sorry, 1999, he said this, Hell is not a physical place, but a state of those who freely and definitively separate themselves from God. This is not a place of fiery torment, but instead just pain, frustration, and emptiness of a life without God. This is what Christianity, if you want to call it that, if you want to put us in this category, although we know different than that, but people who profess to be Christian, this is what they're being taught, this is what they're soaking up, this is what they're actually preaching out, this is what they actually believe, this is what they're teaching their children. Charles Spurgeon, when he, um, when he was preaching in the Metropolitan Tabernacle, he said, I see a growing belief, a, gro a growing doctrine that is dangerous to Christianity. He said, it's the unbelief in the eternal judgment of all those who don't know God. Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, he knew that the gospel message within itself is nothing without hell. What did Jesus die to save us from? How can a man truly appreciate what he can save from if he doesn't believe it? So basically, Pope John Paul is in cahoots with Billy Graham, and they've all said that hell is not a real place, it's a state of mind. I speak to many Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, and they always tell me this one thing when we talk about this subject. They say, surely hell is not a real place. Surely it can't be. How can a loving God create such a terrible place? How can a loving God create such a terrible place? You see, the whole church as a whole today, in this day and age in which we live in, they're very caught up on the love of God. They capitalize the love of God. They put it in big right to God is love, and thank God He is love. We, we need the love of God. Without the love of God, no one's going to be saved. It's by the love of God that men are saved. It's by the love of God that Jesus Christ came and gave His life as a ransom for many. Right? But nevertheless, what we have to understand is this. Although God is a God of love, Although God is a God of mercy, although God is a God of grace, although God is a God who wishes that none should perish and all should come to repentance, on the other side of the scale, He is a God of wrath. He is a God of justice. He is a God of judgment and He is a God of retribution, who will by no means let the wicked go unpunished. See, there has to be a balance. In Proverbs 11, verse 1, a well known scripture that, that you probably would have heard me say a few times, and I put it to many things in my life, look on all things. The Bible says this, a dishonest scale is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. A dishonest scale, a scale that hangs too far in the balance on one side, is an abomination to God, but a just weight is his delight. So God is a complete God of balance. And therefore, as Christians, our doctrine should be completely balanced. For every negative, there's a positive. Do you understand what I mean by that? I have a left hand, that means I have a right hand. Can't have one without the other. If I had one hand, you'd just say you had one hand. You wouldn't say you had a right hand, would you? No, of course. A battery has a negative and a positive. I know there's a heaven, therefore I know there's a hell. But many people, they try and brush off this idea of hell. They don't really want to talk about it. It might be too scary for them. It might be too sobering for them. It might interfere with their everyday life. So they try and get rid of this doctrine. But there has to be a complete balance in scripture. Now as, as, I, as I've grown up, television has probably altered my understanding of hell like many of us. I grew up and I believed that uh, Satan created hell. I believed that Satan was a man in a red suit sitting on a big throne with a pitchfork in his hand. And when an evil person would die, a murderer, a rapist, or a drug dealer, they'd go to hell. And what Satan would do is he'd order his demons to throw them into the lake or uh, lake of fire or whatever kind of pit and to be tortured by demons. And that's, that was my belief for years, even when I got saved. Couldn't be no further from the truth. Not at all. Satan does not, did not create hell. Satan does not govern hell. But hell was made for Satan. Hell was made as a punishment for Satan by God himself. We have to understand what hell is. Hell is the complete unadulterated fury and wrath of God against sin and sinful men. 
This is what hell is. It's where God's wrath is burdened for eternity against all rebellion and sin. So tonight, we're going to push all human opinion aside. We're going to push all horror movies and whatever influence they've had on us aside. And we're going to look to get a better biblical understanding of the nether realm. Amen? Amen. So we're going to look at the five compartments of hell. Hell was split into five parts. Some parts which were, some which are today, and one which will exist in the future. And we're going to try and look at them from a biblical point of view. Turn with me to Matthew 25, verse 41. I'm going to show you who hell was meant for the 41 years. This is Jesus speaking. Matthew 25, 41. And he says, Then he will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. In verse 46 it says, And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So we can see that this is a serious topic. This is a serious topic. Jesus considered it serious. He spoke about hell more than probably anything else. He spoke about all through the book of Mark, all through the gospel, he spoke about hell. He come down to heaven to die so he wouldn't have to go to hell. This is a serious topic. This is not something to be taken lightly tonight, church. So tonight, we should want to leave this place with a better understanding. If you have a question, don't be ashamed to ask at the end. I want you to leave with a better understanding of this place. When a man has a better understanding of this judgment, he'll have a better understanding of the love of God. <coughs> and by that mercy, the Bible says in Romans 12, we can live as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Amen. So we're going to look at the five parts. Hell was split into five parts. Sheol, or Hades, which is the unseen spiritual state of the dead, a place we can't see. There's paradise, which was a part of hell. There's the abyss, there's Tartarus and Gehenna. And we're gonna go through all of these, I'm gonna give you the scriptures as we go along. First of all, we're gonna look at Hades. Turn with me to Luke 16. Luke 16, verse 19. Rich man Lazarus, very well known. You see, mankind was never meant to go to hell. Never meant to. Mankind was created by God to have fellowship with God and live forever with God. That was God's initial plan for mankind. But after the fall, after Adam's rebellion, man was separated from God. He was separated while he was living, but also he was eternally separated from his death. And although this place of eternal fire was prepared for the devil and his angels, sorry, just, just really quickly turn to me to Isaiah 5.12. Although it was uh, compared to the devil and his angels, when mankind sinned, he was separated from God in his life and in his death. There had to be a common accommodation for the sinful soul of man. And the Bible says this in Isaiah 5.13. It says, Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and the multitude are dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged itself and he has opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he who is jubilant shall descend into them. You see, there had to be accommodation for man's sinful soul. So the Bible says that hell, Sheol, or Hades, it enlarged itself beyond measure. So when a man should die, instead of his soul wandering about the earth, it would go into captivity, it would go into this place, it would go into this place called Hades, which we have in our Bible. So Luke 16 says this, verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day, means he had to the best. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And so it was that the beggar died and 